Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. In this Best Pre-Built Gaming PC 2024 Buying Guide, we are gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to buy the best gaming computer in 2024, and we'll give specific product recommendations for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K pre-built gaming PCs. Whether you're looking to dominate in esports games like Valorant, play titles like Alan Wake 2 at 4K, or you're just looking for the best budget pre-built gaming PC to play Roblox, we'll get you the best pre-built gaming PC in 2024. With that, let's jump into it. Let's start off with the most important part of buying the best pre-built gaming PC in 2024, the graphics card also called the GPU for short. The GPU is gonna determine what resolution and FPS that you can expect in your games. In 2024, the most popular gaming resolution is 1440p followed by 4K with 1080p becoming more of a budget option. We have a whole gaming monitor buying guide that I will link in the video description so you can check that out if you need some help buying a best gaming monitor. In 2024, while AMD, Nvidia, and Intel make dedicated gaming GPUs, for some reason Nvidia GPUs dominate the pre-built gaming PC market, but this might change so we'll also list some relevant AMD cards as well. Intel is still new at making GPUs and their drivers still need some work, so I don't quite recommend them just yet to pre-built gaming PC buyers. In addition to how fast your GPU is, in 2024, the amount of video RAM, or VRAM for short, is also very important. This is the amount of RAM on your GPU, and that's different than your total system RAM. And your VRAM can run out on newer graphics intensive titles like Alan Wake 2, Hogwarts Legacy, and coming releases. I recommend at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM for 4K gaming, at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM for 1440p, and no compromises 1080p. Eight gigabyte VRAM GPUs are really only for budget 1080p gaming, and you should not get less than eight gigabytes of VRAM. Also, remember that easy to run games like League of Legends don't require as powerful a GPU to run at good frame rates at 1440p or 4K, while games like Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty are much harder to run and they require a stronger GPU. Starting at 4K gaming GPUs going from the minimum up on the NVIDIA side, we recommend a minimum of an RTX 4070 Ti Super 16 gigabyte GPU, going up to the RTX 4080 and 4080 Super, and currently the fastest GPU overall is the RTX 4090. On the AMD side, I'd recommend a minimum of an RX 7900 XT 20 gigabyte, up to the RX 7900 XTX 24 gigabyte GPU, which is about as strong as an RTX 4080 Super. Moving over to the 1440p GPUs on the NVIDIA side, my minimum recommendation is the RTX 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, not the eight gigabyte, avoid that version of this GPU. Then we have the RTX 4070 12 gigabyte and the newer RTX 4070 Super 12 gigabyte and the RTX 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte. Of course, any of the 4K GPUs will also work very well for 1440p high FPS. For AMD GPUs, I would recommend a minimum of an RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte GPU, then going up to the RX 7700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU and up to the RX 7800 XT 16 gigabyte GPU, which is about as strong as the 4070 Super. For 1080p, no compromises gaming on the NVIDIA side, the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte has been my go-to recommendation for budget pre-built gaming PCs. You can even run a lot of games at 1440p on this GPU, but just be careful as there's an eight gigabyte VRAM RTX 3060, which has a lot less power. On the AMD side, the RX 7600 XT 16 gigabyte is likely the one to look for. For budget 1080p gaming, so only eight gigabytes of VRAM, on the Nvidia side, we have the RTX 4060 eight gigabyte, the RTX 4060 Ti eight gigabyte, or the slower RTX 3060 8 gigabyte and the RTX 3050 8 gigabyte GPUs. AMD GPUs here include the RX 7600 8 gigabyte, it's about equal to the 4060, or the older RX 6600, 6600 XT, or 6650 XT 8 gigabyte GPUs, which are all much faster than the RTX 3050. Warning, there are a lot of PCs advertised as gaming computers with total garbage graphics cards. Do not buy these PCs under any circumstances as you will regret it when you try to actually game on them. I would avoid any GPU with less than eight gigabytes of VRAM, including the previously popular Nvidia GTX 1660 Super six gigabyte. The AMD RX 6500 XT was a laptop GPU that was badly ported over to desktop and should also be avoided. I also do not recommend the Intel A380. And as always, just throw away those GTX 1650s, 1630s, 1030s, and GT 710s into the recycling bin. The second most important thing when buying the best pre-built gaming PC in 2024 is your CPU. Now, modern CPUs, they become very fast. And in today's pre-built market, you'll basically see two tiers of CPUs, a more budget-friendly 
older lineup of the Ryzen 5600X, 12th gen Intel CPUs like the i5-12600K, or 13th and 14th gen non-K Intel CPUs like the i5-13400. At the more premium tier, you'll see Ryzen 7000 CPUs like the Ryzen 7600X, or top tier Ryzen 7800X3D, and high-end Intel CPUs from the 13th and 14th gen with a K in their name, like the i5-13600K. So which one do you need? Well, it really all depends on your graphics card. As with a higher end of 1440p and any of the 4K graphics cards, getting a faster CPU will increase your FPS. Meanwhile, at the budget level, you just need a budget tier CPU to get the full GPU performance. Note that while most of these CPUs are fine for amateur level production work, if you do heavy professional level production work, like high-end video editing, then I would recommend getting an eight core CPU or higher. Of course, you don't just need a great CPU, but you need good CPU cooling and case airflow for your gaming PC. You do not want to thermally throttle your PC because that's bad. For simple guidance, if you have a Ryzen CPU with six cores, or an Intel CPU without the K in its name, then low profile downdraft style coolers, they're generally fine, though we always appreciate seeing at least a budget tower air cooler. For eight core or bigger Ryzen CPUs or i5 Intel CPUs with a K in their name, at a minimum, we want a budget tower air cooler or 120 millimeter liquid AIO cooler or bigger. For 12 or 16 core count Ryzen CPUs or an i7 or an i9 CPU with a K in its name, like the 13700K, consider at least a 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler or a big air cooler. Liquid coolers, they're a little more common for better shipping protection. In terms of case airflow, you really wanna be able to see where the air is actually getting into the PC and how the hot air is being exhausted out. Side slits on the case, they're okay-ish, but we'd really like to see mesh panels or glass with significant air gaps, and we'd love to see at least two to three intake fans along with one exhaust fan. Remember, you can get good airflow along with good aesthetics like RGB, so do not settle for a PC that isn't gonna perform its best. How much RAM do you need for the best pre-built gaming PC 2024? For just gaming, you wanna get at least 16 gigabytes of memory and sticks should be in pairs, either two or four, to get the best performance. In 2024, you really wanna avoid any system with only eight gigabytes of RAM. While 32 gigabytes isn't necessary, except for a handful of CPU intensive simulation games with heavy modding, it is nice to have, though it's generally only available around the $2,000 price point and above. And if you buy from a system integrator, more on that in just a moment, you can always add more RAM. Just don't mix and match RAM speeds, so make sure to get an identical kit to the one you already have or just replace the existing one entirely. In terms of DDR5 versus DDR4 RAM, there really isn't much for you to do as this system builder is just basically gonna put in the correct type. Ryzen 7000 CPUs are DDR5 only, while Ryzen 5000 CPUs and below, as well as 11th and 10th generation Intel CPUs are DDR4 only. Intel CPUs in the 12th gen and newer use either DDR4 or DDR5, which is locked in depending on the motherboard installed. And I'd only really worry about this for ultra high-end pre-built gaming PCs using 13th or 14th generation Intel CPUs that are unlocked with a K in their name, where I'd recommend fast DDR5 if you can afford it without having to settle for a slower GPU. In terms of RAM speed, for DDR4, I recommend getting at least 3200 speed memory. I do really like 3600 speed if you can find it. For DDR5 memory speed, we'd love to see DDR5 5600 and speeds on the higher end. Systems can go up to 6000 and beyond. Finally, let's talk about how upgradable your pre-built gaming PC will be. If your system is assembled by a system integrator, or SI for short, that means they take regular off-the-shelf parts that a regular PC builder like me would use, like this graphics card. And this ensures that everything's gonna be upgradable in the future. Now, these companies include SkyTech, ABS, iBuyPower, CyberPowerPC, and others. If instead you buy from a company that manufactures its own non-standard parts, these are called Original Equipment Manufacturers, or OEM for short, and that includes Dell, Lenovo, HP, and others, then you'll likely get at least a couple of parts that may not be upgradable, Though some folks like HP in their Omen lineup have taken the extra step to make sure that the most commonly upgradable parts like RAM will work with off the shelf kits. The trade-off of course comes down to saving a little bit money on an OEM pre-built gaming PC or spending just a bit more for a fully upgradable system from a system integrator. Note that you can have a lot of system integrators build you a custom PC, but this is often quite expensive. And in my opinion, buying a pre-built system offers far better value for most gamers. Let's jump into the best pre-built gaming PC 2024 product recommendations. Links for everything are down in the video description. And remember that we continue to update this list of best deals 
every couple of days. So check that list for the latest deals and pricing and availability in your region. Let's jump into the best 4K Prebuilt Gaming PC 2024. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. Now at the very top, of course, we've got the RTX 4090. That's the graphics card you're gonna focus in on. And you're looking to spend, I know this might sound like a lot, but about 3,000 up to about $4,000. Mostly kind of more in that lower 3,000. Though if you get like a super nice case and some other features in there, they can go up in price. Typically we're finding 32 gigs of RAM on these PCs and you're gonna see CPUs. Generally, I'd like to see either Ryzen 7800 X 3D, two thumbs up there, or you're gonna look for like an i9 4900K, 1300K, they're essentially the same thing. I7 14700K probably be okay as well. This is the SkyTech Gaming Azure right now, $3,400. It comes in a really nice, this is called the Montec Sky 2 case. It's like an atrium style case. It's got the air intake on the side, which looks super cool. It's got a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. And again, we've got that Ryzen 7800X 3D, which is the top gaming CPU right now. i9 will beat this in terms of some productivity. However, most human beings probably could not tell the difference between these two, unless you're a super high-end video editor or you do super multi-threaded workloads, this is an amazing PC to get. Again, 32 gigs of RAM, I love 1000 watt PSU. I love really everything about this. Let's take a look at some competitors out there like ABS. ABS is Newegg's in-house brand. Newegg is a major US electronics retailer and they take some of the PC parts that they sell, they put them together in pre-built under the ABS label and they sell them. And they're pretty good, they do a good job. Typically the Intel CPUs right now at least are a little cheaper than Ryzen. The Ryzen CPUs are like really in demand but the i9 13900KF here, phenomenal CPU, RTX 4090 in it, 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 RAM and a two terabyte NVMe SSD. The one thing I really do like about ABS's brand over some of the other competitors is they will tell you exactly what you're getting typically in these. Down to the manufacturer model number, they're gonna give you the Gigabyte RTX 4090 WinForce V2 version. They're not just gonna say it's a 4090, whatever we can get in for the cheapest. And they're gonna tell you what the SSD is. They're gonna tell you what the cooler is. It's a thermal take 360 millimeter RGB AI very, very good unit. So that's what I really, really like about ABS. $3,200, this is actually a pretty good deal. Let's jump over to an OEM pre-built with an RTX 4090, typically a little bit cheaper than I'm seeing right now. $3,229, you know, it's a little bit of a price savings, but not much. And the one thing I'm not liking about this 16 gigs of memory, I would expect to see 32 here. Typically they do have 32 gig configurations for whatever reason they're sold out. But this is HP Omen. I do like HP for one critical reason. Not only do I think they do a good job on their pre built although remember, they're OEMs, some of their parts are proprietary, they're not gonna be as upgradable, but they will allow you to upgrade the RAM kits in the Omen lineup. The BIOS, that's the thing that actually runs the motherboard, will allow you to use XMP timings on any of their RAM kits. So I do like that over some of the other OEMs out there. 3229, not bad. I'd like to see that's a little cheaper though, given its competition from good SI PCs. All right, dropping down a performance tier to the RTX 4080. So these are RTX 4080 pre-built gaming PCs. And right now, Nvidia is in the process of phasing out the 4080 and bringing in the 4080 Super. There's really no performance difference between the two. It's kind of nonsensical what they're doing, quite honestly. So don't worry which one you get. Now you still want a higher end gaming CPU for this because this is 4K territory or super high FPS at 1440p. Let's take a look. You're looking to spend anywhere from about 2,200 bucks up to about $2,900, depending on what you want. And we're still expecting to get 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM like with this SkyTech Gaming Eclipse. i9-1300K, super performer CPU, 1400K, 1300K, they're all the same thing. Don't worry about that. One terabyte NVMe, awesome right there. 1000 watt uh, PSU on that as well, 2899, not a bad price. Moving over to something like the iBuyPower Trace 7 Mesh. So this, you're gonna save more money, $2,400. Jason, what's the real difference here? It still has an i7 14700KF. It's a good CPU, but slightly less performative than the 13900K. Instead, you're probably never gonna notice the difference. 32 gigs of memory still, but this comes on a B660 motherboard. This does not include a Z series motherboard, so you can't actually overclock this. It'll just run it at the base frequency. Most of you out there are not gonna be doing any overclocking, so I don't really think that's a big loss. 
if you don't mind saving a little bit of money, this is the way to go. And finally, you don't need a super high-end CPU for this RTX 4080. If you want to continue to save some money, this is a SkyTech Gaming Eclipse. It looks just like the first one I showed you, except it's got a 13600K. This is an i5-13600K in it. Again, with that same 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, same one terabyte NVMe. It says C pricing cart, but if you look at my cart up there, it's $2,300 right now. And it still comes with that 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. This is a really, really good deal. And really quick, Quickly, if you're still looking for 4K, but you have about 2,000, maybe even slightly less to spend, the good news is the RTX. 4070 Ti Super, that's the GPU that was sitting next to me, has come. And this is a 4K capable GPU, and it now has 16 gigs of VRAM instead of the 12 gigs that came on the 4070 Ti, which makes it a 4K capable card across all titles, including if you want to turn on high effects on ray tracing. We're already starting to see some of these PCs hit. As you can tell, this one just came off the market and immediately was backordered, but I do expect these to start hitting the market in more strength. This is the Abia Stratos Ruby. I don't know why, where they come up with these names, but it's got a Ryzen 7 7700X, really two thumbs up, good game, higher performance gaming CPU on this. And of course it comes with 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 speed RAM, two thumbs up. I, I absolutely love 1999 for this, especially especially if you want to get into 4K gaming and you can't quite stretch to those higher end PCs, this is the one to get. Let's jump into the best 1440p pre-built gaming PC 2024. Remember, everything is linked down in the video description. These deals will change, but let's go through what you can expect to find in the market. You're going to look to spend anywhere from about ah, $1,100 up to $1,800, depending on the configuration and the power of the GPU. And we're looking for 4070 Ti 12 gigabyte, the 4070 Super, the 4070, and the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte as well, not the eight gigabyte version. There aren't any real AMD cards out here. Now the AMD makes cards, it's just for whatever reason, they're not in the pre-built market. I do expect that will probably change here over the next couple months. So check the links down in the video description and those AMD cards are just as performative. Let's start off with the ABS Stratos. So this is a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler with an i7-13700KF, highly performative gaming CPU. And it's got 32 gigs of DDR5-6000, two thumbs up there on the, on the RAM speed, 4070 Ti. So this is a 12 gigabyte GPU, fantastic for 1440p gaming. And this will give you the highest performance of the cards in this class. Coming down to $150 if you don't have quite that much, but you want similar levels of performance, Skytech Azure here. This has a Ryzen 5 7600X. 7600X not quite as fast as the 13700KF, but still very, very high performance gaming CPU out there. 32 gigs of RAM. Essentially, it's a very similar package, except it's in that really sweet looking atrium style case with all the RGB on it. 240 millimeter AIO, and you save 150 bucks. Of course, coming down to like the RTX 4070 super level and RTX 4070 level, you lose a little bit of overall GPU performance, but you, again, we're saving more money. We're saving another 200 bucks here. This is the ABS Flux. It's a micro ATX case, so it's a slightly shorter case than the full ATX size out there. Nothing to really worry about. i5-14400. You can also find i5-13400. This is about as far as I would push this CPU with the 4070 Super right here. Uh, you're going to get a very slight CPU bottleneck. Nothing really to worry about. Still 32 gigs of DDR5-6000. Two thumbs up there. And you're going to save quite a bit of money at $1,400. And then hitting what I feel like is really kind of the minimum specs in order to call this a 1440p gaming PC. $1,299 here for the Cyber Power PC. This is a 13700F. It's not a K in there, but still the 13700 is very performative. RTX 4060 Ti, 16 gigabytes. Now you'll note only 16 gigs of DDR5 on that. I don't really think that's a huge deal, but if you want 32 gigs, it might be worth spending $100 to go up the ladder there. Otherwise, I think this is pretty appropriately priced. Let's jump into the best pre-built gaming PC under $1,000, also known as the best cheap Rebuilt Gaming PC 2024. Remember, everything's linked down in the video description. And here we're primarily focusing on one GPU. That is the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. We want to make sure that we're getting that 12 gigabyte because oftentimes you see a listing like this, the Skytech Gaming Shiva 2, and you're like, okay, it's an RTX 3060, but it's just a crappy eight gigabyte version that's super cut down, or it's just a 12 gigabyte version that's going to allow us to play all the games at 1080p and many games at 1440p. And we scroll down, in fact, yeah, it's right there, RTX 3060 12 12 gigabyte and it says on it. So you that's what you should expect to get. If you don't get that from them, then go ahead and return it. And thank goodness for Amazon allows you to do that. This is the Skytech Gaming 
Shiva 2. I really like this case setup. It looks super nice. It also comes with a budget tower air cooler, and I love it comes with an i5 12400F. This is a very appropriate CPU for this GPU. Really, really good uh, CPU GPU combo here. 16 gigs of DDR4. That's what you generally expect in these cheaper PCs is you're going to get DDR4 RAM. No difference between DDR4 and DDR5 for this level of CPU, by the way. You can also find these often with the Ryzen 5600 or 5600X. Equal performance to the i5 12400 and equal performance to the i5 13400 or 14400, quite frankly. Now, here's a deal I almost didn't show you because I think it may set some unrealistic expectations because this is absolutely insane. In fact, I'm going to post this to the channel. This is the Lenovo Gaming Desktop Legion T5, a fancy way of saying it's basically an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. I've already checked the specs on this one with 16 gigs of RAM and a Ryzen 5600G. Now, the 5600G, it's slightly different than the 5600S, slightly less performance performance, that's what the G kind of really should think about that standing for, slightly less performance, but still very appropriate for this GPU level. And honestly, I even though that these are OEM, so this is Lenovo makes the motherboard, they make everything else, I believe you're able to swap out the RAM in the future if you want, or add in an XMP kit. Uh, they look nice. And overall, they typically come with like, right as you can see right there, a budget tower air cooler on it. It's kind of hard to make out in this overall thing, especially since the CPU, this is obviously a render. And for 670 bucks, I mean, geez, what do you really want? That's amazing. Let's jump in the breast, cheap gaming PC 2024. Now, honestly, these are just PCs with eight gigs of VRAM. So eight gigs of VRAM, it's enough to play 98% of the titles in 2024 at 1080p. However, a couple of titles that are coming out and have come out in 2023 and 2024, you're not gonna have enough VRAM. That's why you're like, Jason, how come you don't recommend the RTX 4060? You're recommending the 3060 over the 4060? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me either why Nvidia released the 4060 in this terrible state. Has less VRAM than 3060 and only has a, a little tiny bit more performance. It's almost the exact same card, just less VRAM. So it's a terrible GPU in that regard in terms of value. But if you can find them considerably cheaper, you you might pick up something like the Skytep Gaming Nebula here with an i5 13400F and an RTX 4060 for $849, especially as those 4060 pre-built gaming PCs actually fall under the price of the 3060s because pre-built manufacturers have realized, hey, people don't want the crappy 4060, they'd rather have the 3060 with 12 gigs of VRAM instead. And of course, even going a little bit down, it looks like the same identical PC, it's Skytech Gaming Nebula here, but this is an RTX 3050. This is eight gigs of VRAM, a lot less performance though than the 4060. So if, if you're kind of tossing between the two and it's only a little bit of a price difference and you can't quite afford the 3060 12 gigabyte that I'm strongly recommending to you, then this is one to check out. Remember, everything is linked down in the video description. We are to continue to update that list every couple of days with the best deals available right now. And if you got value out of the video, please give a like so it makes a huge difference to the channel. And we'll catch you on the next one.